Welcome to this third lecture about postdoc tests, where we discuss the Bonferroni method. The Bonferroni method is a very simple method to control the family-wise error rate below a certain level when we make multiple comparisons. Remember from the first lecture about postdoc tests that the family-wise error rate is the probability or risk that we make at least one type 1 error when we make several comparisons where the null hypotheses are true. The family-wise error rate can be calculated by the following formula, where alpha is the significance level and k is the number of independent comparisons we make. For example, if we make 10 independent comparisons where the null hypothesis is true, and where we use a significance level of 5% for each comparison, the risk that we make at least one type 1 error is about 40%. This table shows the risk to commit at least one type 1 error if the null hypothesis is true for all tests. For example, we see that 5 tests result in a 23% risk, whereas 20 tests result in a 64% risk. If you run 100 tests, the risk for committing at least one type 1 error is almost 100%. One common approach to control the family-wise error rate is to reduce the significance level of each test so that the family-wise error rate is kept at a certain level. This is exactly what the Bonferroni method does. The significance level is reduced by dividing the original significance level by the number of comparisons that we make. For example, if we make 10 comparisons or tests, we should divide the original significance level by 10 which results in a family-wise error rate that is approximately equal to 5%. Note that the significance level for each test is now 0 0.005 instead of 0 0.05. We can now calculate the family-wise error rate by the Bonferroni method based on the following number of tests. We see that the Bonferroni method keeps the family-wise error rate just below 5%. Let's use the Bonferroni method on the following data, where one wants to compare the mean systolic blood pressure between four groups. Where one group is used as a control, and the other groups consist of independent individuals that have tried three different drugs, A, B and C, which are supposed to reduce the systolic blood pressure. Remember from the first lecture that these comparisons are not independent, since the same group participates in several comparisons. The equation for the family-wise error rate should therefore only be seen as the upper limit of the family-wise error rate. The total number of possible comparisons that can be made between several groups can be calculated by the following formula, where A is the number of groups. We see that when we have four groups, we can make six possible pairwise comparisons. For example, we can compare the mean systolic blood pressure in the control group against the ones on drug A, B or C. We can also compare group A versus group B, group A versus group C, and group B versus group C. If we use Fisher's LSD test for each of the six comparisons, after a significant ANOVA, we generate the following p-values. We see that the three p-values are less than the general significance level of 0 0.05. By using the Bonferroni method, we will now adjust the significance level by dividing it by 6, since we make 6 comparisons. We see that the new significance level is 0 0.0083. This is our Bonferroni corrected significance level. Since this p-value is no longer less than the corrected significance level, we can no longer say that there is a significant difference between group B and C if we use the Bonferroni method. By using the Bonferroni method, few comparisons will reject the null hypothesis, but we can be sure that the probability that we make at least one type 1 error is always less than 5%. Another way to apply the Bonferroni method is to keep the original significance level of 0 0.05 and instead multiply the p-values by the number of tests that we make. Since we make 6 tests, we should multiply the p-values by 6. These new p-values are called adjusted p-values. Since a p-value is a value between 0 and 1, 
adjusted p-values that are greater than 1 are simply set to 1. Therefore, if you see adjusted p-values that are equal to 1, those have been set to 1 because the adjustment resulted in a value that was larger than 1. We'll now compare these adjusted p-values to the significance level of 0.05, which will give the same results as if you compare the original p-values against the adjusted significance level. For example, we see that after adjusting this p-value, it is now greater than 0.05, which tells us that there is no significant difference between groups B and C. The only significant differences are the ones between the control group and the group on drug A, and between the control group and the group on drug B. The major problem with the Bonferroni method is that it is a very conservative method. By using Bonferroni, it is very unlikely they will commit a type 1 error, but more likely they will commit a type 2 error, which means they will get a reduced statistical power. In the previous example, we reduced the significance level for each test from 0.05 to 0.0083 to make sure that the family wise error rate was less than 5%. The problem is that we then increase the risk for a type 2 error, and therefore reduce the statistical power. However, the advantage of the Bonferroni method is that it is a very flexible method that can be used in association with most statistical tests. For example, if we analyze the correlation between several variables, we can adjust the p-values of the significance level based on the number of correlations that we compute. In this example, we compute the pairwise correlation between four variables, which means that we will compute six correlation coefficients and p-values. We can therefore adjust the p-values or the significance level by six. Similarly, if we like to compare the difference in the means of ten variables between two groups, we can adjust our p-values or the significance level by ten. Note that you only need to adjust for the number of comparisons that you actually make. For example, six possible pairwise comparisons can be made in this example, since we have four groups. However, let's say that we only want to compare the control group versus the treatments A, B and C. We are therefore not interested in comparing A with B, A with C and B with C. Then we make only three comparisons out of six possible. We should then divide the significance level by 3, or multiply the p-values by 3, since we now only make 3 comparisons. When we limit the number of comparisons, we will therefore reduce the risk for type 2 error and increase the statistical power compared to if we compare all possible pairs that might not be relevant for our aim of the study. This is why it is important that we have a good idea about which groups that we want to compare before we do the tests, instead of making all possible pairwise comparisons. In the next lecture, we'll discuss Holmes test, which is less conservative compared to the Bonferroni method. It has higher statistical power, but is still able to maintain the family-wise error rate at a low level. See you in the next lecture, and thanks for watching.